What's going on guys? Welcome back to Miniature Mayhem, my name's Chris. In today's tutorial I'm going to be painting Cleo and the Zeitingale, the cities of Zygmar Priestess from the Cursed City box set. For this tutorial I'm going to be using some simple techniques such as base coating and highlighting, as well as some more advanced techniques like freehand and some glazing. If you do find this tutorial useful, don't forget to head down below, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell notification so you never miss an upload, and without further ado, let's get into the video. For Cleona Zeitingale, I've split the model into two different sub-assemblies, the main body here which I've base coated with black primer, and the tassels that hang off the back of her headpiece which I've base coated with Rackarth flesh. I do normally try and avoid painting in sub-assemblies where possible but there's just no way to paint the back of this model without removing this piece. For the robes I used a base coat of Mephiston Red. Just add a small amount of water to this and you should be able to get a nice smooth coat in a couple of layers. I remember when I first started the hobby it used to take about 15 layers of red to actually get a decent coat, especially over black. With that now dry we've got a nice smooth layer to work from. I did later decide to come back and also paint the headdress in red as well. For all of the skin areas, I gave the model a base coat of Bugman's Glow. Later on when I come back I'm only going to apply one highlight to the skin and a slight wash as I decided to keep it quite dark as it's hidden in the recesses. For the purple areas I used a base coat of Phoenician Purple. I hadn't used this paint before so I thought it would be a good chance to test it out. I have to say it gave quite nice coverage although it was quite dark when I watered it down and it did require a couple of thin layers. It's not as heavily pigmented as I would have expected. For the tabard and the tassels on her headpiece I decided to use Rakarth Flesh as the base coat. I've added quite a lot of water to this paint as I want to get a nice smooth base coat and the more water that you add the less chance there is of you having some like texture to the finish. With this being the foundation for some glazing later on and eventually some freehand to finish off the model we need to make sure we have a nice even coat to work from. For all of the leather strapping I used a base coat of Mournfang Brown. Take your time, work your way around and pick out all the different leather strapping, obviously try not to get that on any of the layers that you've been working on before. And with that now done all of the non-metallic base coats are now applied. For the steel and silver areas I used a base coat of Ironbreaker Silver on the stakes across her chest, the business end of her spear and on the rivets around her headdress. Don't forget to get the ones around the back of her head. To base coat the golden areas I used Vallejo's Brassy Brass. This will take a couple of thin layers especially over black and you'll have a nice even coat. I have also painted the entire back of the headdress gold but the majority of this will be covered up when we put the final piece on the model. With all of the metallic base coats now applied it's a good idea now to clean out your brushes, get a fresh pot of water to get rid of all that sparkly paint. And with that done I've got Agrax Earth shade out now and I'm applying that as a wash all over the metallic areas and the leather as well. For the first shade on the tabard I'm using a glaze of Screaming Skull. To do this we just need one part Screaming Skull and two parts Salami and Medium. I'm going to apply this in long broad strokes into the recesses. You don't have to be massively tidy here as we're going to come back in later and highlight the cloth back up to white. After this layer was dry I did a tiny little spot of Mournfang Brown just to deepen the recesses up a little bit more. With that now dry we've got some nice subtle shading on the cloth areas. While the glazes are drying I just carefully apply a wash of Duty Violet to all of the purple areas. Now I 100% should have done this first before I did the cloth but hey I'm only human and we all make mistakes. <laughs> Using Lamy and Medium I've created a 2-in-1 glaze of Rakarth Flesh. 
I'm just applying this over the raised areas and blending in some of the shading that we did in the previous layers. Try to stick to the edges, take your time, work your way around the cloth. For the skin, I just apply some simple volumetric highlights with Cadian Flesh Tone. To create some nice subtle highlights on the cloak, I've made a glaze of Mephiston Red and Wild Rider Red. It's roughly one part paint to two parts medium, and we're going to apply this in long broad strokes, just avoiding the recessed areas. There is no shading on this cloak, so just applying this as a highlight and leaving the recesses as the base coat, we'll get some really nice subtle tones in there. Using the same mix as before that I created for my glaze, I'm going to do some freehand on the cloak and the hood. If you've not done that much freehand before, just make sure that your paint consistency is watered down, but not to the point where you can't control it. And of course, the smaller the point on the brush you've got, then the better you're going to be able to get the paint exactly where you need it. Just take your time and work your way through, and I'm sure it'll look absolutely awesome. For the purple, I've applied an edge highlight of Demonet Hide. To highlight the leather, I've applied an edge highlight and some small nicks with Steel Legion Drab. With the model fully assembled, I've used Vallejo's Glorious Gold to highlight all of the golden areas. I put the model together now as I'm not intending to highlight anything underneath the cloak anymore. With the same mix as I did the freehand before, I just painted some comets on the tails on the back of the cloak. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do on the back here and I decided to keep it a lot simpler than the actual heavy metal colour scheme. And with that final layer dry, Cleo and Zeitingale is now complete. I only actually have about six models left from the Curse City box set and to be honest I'll be really glad to see the end of it. I'm probably going to be working on some Orcs, possibly some Stormcast next, but the next model up on the channel will be the Vargolf from that Curse City box set. If you do find this tutorial useful I'd massively appreciate a thumbs up as it really helps the channel to get recognised by new people. Share us with a friend or anyone you think might find this video interesting. Check out the links in the description below if you want to pick up any of the paints used in today's tutorial. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.